Support School is brought to you by BASF and Pride Seeds. Here we are, the uh, second week in October, and uh, the corn leaves are starting to rattle in the field. The soybeans have dropped their leaves, and harvest is not far off. Uh, we're here at this uh, elevator setup and uh, looking at bins, uh, dryers, conveying systems and that in anticipation of the harvest and uh, looking at things that you should maybe consider if you have these sorts of uh, components on your farm. Trucks and wagons are going to be delivering the uh, corn through this driveway. The uh, dump pit is right underneath this tarp. Uh, the tarp's there to keep the, the water out of the pit. Uh, Basically, when the grain is, when the corn's unloaded, you're going to want to take a sample. And, uh, you know, a lot, there's a lot of coffee cans used in this industry. Uh, I think maybe you should spend a few bucks and get yourself a real sampler, something that will sample that grain stream from front to back of the, uh, of the stream and all the way across the width of that stream. You don't just want to take a grab sample with your hand you don't just want to shove in the coffee can to get the sample. So good sampling requires good sampling techniques to get a representative sample of what is in that load. So from the pit, the uh, conveyor is going to carry it to the elevator leg. The elevator leg is going to carry it to the top of the head and then distribute it to the dryer, to a storage bin or whatever. Grain, when it moves quickly, uh, can be damaged. Uh, not so much when it's moving, it's, it's when it stops after having moved quickly. So you can take a good sample of grain. If you handle it wrong through conveying methods, uh, you can basically degrade that sample. And as a result, the price will reflect that downgrade in quality. So things like cushion boxes, things the grain using grain to cushion itself. Uh, do an analysis on your system. It's not tough. Take a sample of the grain coming off the truck. What's, uh, how many fines are in it. Take a sample after it's been elevated, uh, before it's gone into the dryer, well, how many fines are there, and then after the dryer, and then finally into your storage bin. And by looking at those various samples, you can see where is the culprit or what component is the culprit in degrading the sample uh, from what it was uh, when it was delivered to the farm. We've talked about the corn going uh, up the elevator leg and distributed to various things. Now we're at the dryer, so the corn will be fed into the dryer from a number of different sources possibly. It goes without saying to make sure that the dryer is in tip-top working shape. Uh, you know, the routine maintenance that's required and depending on the dryer that you have that routine maintenance can be short or fairly involved. You need to know what the moisture content is uh, with accuracy of that grain going in. And in this particular unit, there's actually a way of sampling from the uh, garner at the top of the uh, grain dryer, sampling the wet grain uh, at ground level. Similarly, there is a sampling port here on the drag conveyor for the dry grain. So those two sample uh, locations uh, give you a good chance to sample those grains, the, the grain going in and going out. Nobody's really sure what the quality of grain or what the condition of uh, corn is going to be coming off the fields here in the next uh, month to six weeks. But once we know that and we know, you know, how mature it is, if it's uh, got a lot of fines in it, whatever, then you really, as an operator, have to decide where do I run my plenum temperature? Is it going to be a year when we uh, had the nice conditions or will it be one of those years when the corn was tough and uh, the moistures were elevated and uh, we need to make some changes? So uh, before you get far into your harvest, look at your grain sample, look at your records to see when was the last time you dried corn in that condition and then make the appropriate setting for your sort of start point for your plenum temperature. As the season progresses, you may want to adjust that up or down. If the quality is poor of the corn coming in, uh, chances are you should be reducing plenum temperature uh, to maintain quality. 
Last thing I want to talk about is corn storage. Uh, once we've got the corn in the bin, uh, our work is not done. Uh, to maintain good quality corn in good condition through the winter months is not just about putting it in a weatherproof container. You actually have to manage that grain in storage. So one of the critical things is to aerate the corn routinely. Basically, as we go through the fall and the winter and in the spring, you want to bring the corn temperature close to the average outside air temperature. So in other words, in December, you want to cool the corn down. In January, you want to cool it down some more. February, some more as well. The same as our seasonal outdoor temperatures. If we don't do that, there will be uncontrolled air movement in the bin, which is not a big deal, but what happens because of the uncontrolled air movement is when the air moves uncontrollably inside the bin it picks up moisture and it delivers moisture to parts of the bin that you really don't want it to. Moisture time leads to spoilage and if you've put a good quality product in there the last thing you want is for spoilage to degrade that product and, and cause you uh, storage concerns. So uh, aeration is critical. Um, you know, if you're going to uh, the sunny south for any extended period of time, get somebody else to monitor that, those bins on a weekly, or sorry, on a monthly basis. Um, if you leave them for three months, go to the sunny south and come back, uh, you may be in for a nasty surprise.